This is Noah Schechter, writer of episode 905, Benjamin T. Okara. You're listening to The Blacklist Exposed on Golden Spiral Media. Well, apparently the government's latest weapon is a high-powered dog whistle. Welcome, everyone, to the award-winning The Blacklist Exposed podcast. Greetings one and all. I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. Actually pretty funny. And I'm Agent Aaron Peterson, and sing with me. Any way you can kill, I can kill better. Thanks for joining us yet again for number 183 in the black was Benjamin T. Okara, written by Noah Schechter and directed by Jonah Oliver. Show notes and their intel for this episode of The Blacklist Exposed can be found at theblacklistexposed.com. Five episodes into the new season. We're just cruising right along. Uh, yeah. I think this was a good one, too. I, I enjoyed the... Uh, the pacing, the the Red and Dembe stuff. There's a there's a lot of good TV here. Love the Red and Dembe stuff. Glad there's no babies coming. Is it okay to say that if it's a TV character? I don't know what the rules are. I think it'd be better for you to say there's. It's better that there's no babies coming than I want that baby to be a frag grenade like you usually do. Let's see. There you go. All right. Good call. I'm 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 growing as a person. <laughs> it only took nine years, but yeah, yeah. sure. Although it would have been cool. We all change eventually. Just feels like a waste of great screen time. Why does no one ever do that? Walking Dead. Why does no one ever do that? Zombie movies. Why does no one ever do that? I don't get it. It's, you'd spend a lot less time. Quiet Place. Why does nobody do that? Sorry. Continue. But I think the uh, kudos to those of you in the audience that said, there's no way she has cancer and she's pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think. You know what? I, I was looking at fan reactions to last week's, and I think most people kind of had that, or a lot of people had that reaction. I told you a lot in last week's episode, that was my wife's initial reaction, was pregnancy. And I did see some other people uh, saying that before before they ever listened to the podcast, so I'm sure it was a common conception, though many did think cancer. I mean, pregnancy was definitely a, an option, too. It's, it's just, you know, a wrestler, he doesn't think of pregnancy, so he wouldn't think to even mention that one. That's because it's the only woman in the thing that he hasn't slept with. What? That's actually kind of true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Need to bring out a few more ladies. Just a few. Just a few. Well, if you're new to the show, we start the show with our profiling question of the week from wrapping up some stuff from last week. Then we get into our case profile on this week's episode for Benjamin T. Okara. And then, of course, we'll hear from all of you in our special agent intel section at the end of the show. So last week... We all had the big question, of course, that everyone's asking, including some kind of bad detective work, but we'll find <laughs> out who actually killed the Cooper's neighbor. Yeah, and uh, the results were 60% said Charlene. I mean, damn, just automatically assume the two-timer's the, the murderer, huh? Right. This is the problem with true crime. Every time I listen to a true crime episode, you know, if if the person had had a fling, automatically they, they think everybody thinks they're the guilty one. I'm like, that doesn't mean to make them a murderer. It means they're horny. Like those are two different, <laughs> two different things, but that's exactly I, what I was going to say. I'm like, if everybody yeah. was a murderer for being, having an affair, then why would people have an affair? <laughs> exactly. It's just, man, man, 30% said other, which was an option in the poll. And I'm blaming you, Troy, for that one. Like why, why is other an option in the poll? Because there were five spots and I needed a fifth spot and I didn't know of another name to throw out there. Well, I, I do notice she didn't put Cooper in here. Like, you just can't even fathom the concept that Cooper did it. Or a ROM. Um, that's why they're called Other. <laughs> let's let's shake it up. How about a ROM did it? In the ballroom with the candlestick. You know, he does seem very over eager to be like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Are you okay? Are yeah, you okay? Exactly. Mm. And then one day he's going to finally tell him, guess what? So I totally drugged you and then I killed your wife's ex-boyfriend. You're welcome. In his front yard with, with a rail gun on a military tank. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh six percent said red. Wait, a lot of people just don't think he's he's capable of stuff this year. Uh three percent said Panda Baker and one percent said Scotty. Um, I think Scotty would just take the baby and also win in court, but that's beside the point. I like the Panda Baker angle. Not that Panda Baker actually did it, but did something to frame it. I think that's an interesting twist. Yeah. By the way, uh, I've had several people argue with me about, which is fine. Hey, hey, healthy debate is good. 
I will tell you as someone who spent an unhealthy amount of time in family court with custody battles that yes, the grandma's going to win over the mom's predetermined um, <laughs> decisions almost every time unless they can prove her unfit. There would be a court battle and the side leans toward grandma, just so you know. Because he's not a parental figure. He's not related. That's not where I thought your comment of a healthy debate was coming. Because I was like, I thought it was c- coming at a snag directed at me or something. <laughs> no, no, no. No, just many people telling me that you're wrong, you're wrong. You don't know how that works. And I'm like, man, if you had any idea how well I know how that works, <laughs> you would be astonished. All right. So the question for next week, what's in the box? I'm excited that they brought that back. That's uh it was we talked nut- about that, I think, in the first episode, right? About the, about the magic box and how with him going off, does that mean that whatever is in it doesn't apply? And I am really curious to know if we're going to see what's in it. Do you think we're actually going to see or it's just one of those where it's going to be a MacGuffin? It's going to be an, a Hitchcock MacGuffin. I think that the Blacklist resolves stuff quickly. So hopefully we'll get to see what this is. Unfortunately, we're going to be off the air for a bit because of the holiday here in the States. So it'll be a little bit drawn out before we get the reveal. But yeah, I think we will see what made him kind of tear up when he opened it up and be a little melancholy. I think there's I think there's more to this Red and Dembe story as the season unfolds. Well, it's definitely a high point, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Do but- you feel like you're getting more serialized at this point more of the stuff that you wanted that you hadn't gotten that will bring you to the next episode the branching to the next episode to the next episode so on and so forth yeah like it doesn't have to be a mythology it just has to be like a thing that like we resolve story a set up story b so i come back next week if you resolve everything then what's the point of picking up the new book you know so just just give me a nugget like the we watch i watch i watch a million little things on abc and i stopped (laughs) They do a really good job on that show, just like the last two minutes of being like, and here's what next week's story is. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I'll come back next week. Yeah, that's a good hook. Yeah. Good to have a hook. All right. Well, time to move on. All right. Profile. Well, before we blow up ourselves or our longtime friendship, let's go ahead and get into this week's case profile. But now I secretly want to get a device just to make Aaron go away. <laughs> I don't think, wow, I don't think this episode is going to be the one that's going to going to do it. Did you say you want a device to make me go away? I was just trying to throw it in there. Like it murder me? So obviously, you're also a two-timer. That's I, the way I'm understanding these polls. Is it murder if you die and there's no fingerprints? I don't know. Yes. Yes. You don't understand what lying is, what murder is, what anything is. I think it's like, no rules here. It's all I, the I Matrix. Blame, I blame the show. I'm nine years, I've been brainwashed. I don't know what to right. think anymore. Serenoids and withholding Mm. information and TV show makes you have character. Apparently (laughs) I have depth. Oh man. I just watched too much TV. No, you were just crazy to begin with, but whatever. All right. Well, this time a man named Stan believing the CID already has somebody in custody is somehow glitched and killed in his car by a man with a bitching pair of sunglasses and a gizmo that looks like he's playing pong. That's my only big <laughs> issue with the episode is that it's high technology. Look, it's a cool idea. I love the energy, zzz, but it looks like Pong. And this and is, what, what this the is hell? why you don't do a video game podcast, because I thought it was more like Tempest because it had the circular thing in the middle. Whatever. It looks like a video game. And I'm just like, mm, not a good game. Like, why can you get GPS? Can you get Google Maps? <laughs> can you get something that looks like high tech on there? It just did not, it wasn't a great effect. It wasn't a great effect. And I was kind of, look, I like the episode. I was giggling inside though at parts. Every time I saw him and it pinpointed the little, the little dot, <laughs> I'm like, okay, easy. How does he know that dot is so-and-so? He can't even see them. Like there was a part where he was chasing the, the, um, the character that Park was trying to save. And I'm like, you don't even see, you can't even really see him. So how do you know that's the dot? It could be a sheep. You don't know. Deer. Random child. How do you know it's not Park? Or her random Didn't know. child. Didn't. Other dot was other dot was coming. Didn't seem too concerned. I mean, that could have been two children. That could have been two children in a playground you just took out. Nice job, dude. Just saying. All right. Well, we soon learn about from Red about the Havana syndrome. A series of weird illnesses that are somehow caused by a directed energy weapon of sorts. Very 
specific, highly specific and directed weapons created by Benjamin Okara, an MIT grad who was suspended multiple times. Who if there's had, a secret if this guy had a sword and a cape, kind of would be a good blade replacement. <laughs> he does he does kind of look like yeah, he's kind of badass with those sunglasses. Uh there's a secret project that DARPA is investigating, uh, a missing team that is being eliminated. Apparently they thought weird metal twists would warn them of an attack like that uh what I don't know what they called it, but uh, it didn't wire, work. Wire coat hangers. <laughs> yeah. Together. It, that was kind of weird. The, the first time we saw one, I'm like, what is, why does she have that in her apartment and why is it glowing? Okay. It's working. Uh, it works. Just not good enough. Didn't let him know. So he wants to actually destroy the weapon because they will use it to hurt protesters that will cause mass suffering. And, you know, he wants to destroy the magic trick, including himself. Now, I actually like that any angle of it. I like how they came at it. I'm just trying to figure out, well, why did you spend all that time building it then? Did you not know what they would use it for? Uh, real Thoughts? genius. They spend all that time building the laser. Did you not know it was going to be sold to the military? Uh, maybe. You know, that that is okay because Val Kilmer, comedy genius. But if you think Little about it, like any, any one of these projects, like even if you think Manhattan Project, right? No one really knows what's going to be done. You're just trying to see what is the capabilities. Maybe this was targeted laser treatment, but instead of lasers, it was sonic. Because lasers left scars, so it could have been it could have been a a decent device initially in the concept, and then when sure. you see the applications of it, that's when the military comes in and goes snatch it up. So, what did you think of the of the overall plot? I actually liked I really liked the idea. I liked the concept. Like I said, my only the device takes me out of it. Is that fair to say the device takes me out of it? And I know the that's, physical the physical box the physical box takes me out of it because it's hard to take that seriously as the weapon technology of tomorrow when i have better technology on my phone if it would have been the shape of a phone would you have liked it if it did the same thing and just played pong i think it honestly would have made more sense wouldn't it in today's era maybe i mean i get it it's kind of the concept is a little bit drone like 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 you're saying you can pinpoint like a drone you can you know fly it over but it didn't have if it would have had even the video of maybe like a i don't know flying nanobot i don't know something something on the screen to give the impression that it could physically see and pinpoint a target other than the dot i think it would have worked better now obviously i don't know what the budget is da, 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 but i'm just saying that was a just that was i think it's a fair criticism even though i was making jokes earlier it does look like pong i'm not making a joke but <laughs> but i think it's a fair criticism to say that the effect hurt the intent to some degree. Yeah, because I think the effect also then makes you assume, which is on you if you assume, but it makes you assume that if it's a dot, it's pinpointed. Like I have to dial in a specific frequency to attack a specific person because once we get the the chase scene with Park, then you go, oh, Park's affected too. So it's not as pinpoint accurate or dialed in to a specific person because I thought he was exactly. only trying to target the science team. Exactly. Because her dot didn't look much different than his dot. Or right. was it her? I can't remember. It was a woman or a man. It was uh, a man, man that was, was running. Reason, yeah. Hans. Yeah. Right. So. And then yeah, you get the explanation at the end, of course, that you can like, you could wipe out an entire mass protest crowd. It's like, well, then what's the point of the dot? <laughs> and it's just, I, I mean, it's supposed to be next level technology. And I mean, just pixel six just had a new app come out and it's called magic eraser, right? On their new phones. And you can actually take a picture and if you pull the picture up, it will highlight people that are in your picture and remove them. <sighs> Just remove them. And I have it, and I'm telling you, it works. It's it's pretty awesome. That looks way better than this, and that is a phone app. You know what I mean? So I'm just saying I, I don't know what the buzz, budget limitations are you know, or, or whatnot. I just think that was a distraction from the impact of the device itself. The actual well, overall story, I think, is very cool. I, I actually really like the story and his struggle, and I'm I'm on board with it. It's just every time they actually show the device in action, it uh, it didn't work for me. Yeah, I, I love the story. I we, we we talked about this before. Anytime you have the quote unquote villain that has I love it. I liked the, it. <laughs> the ability that um that assumes that they're doing the right thing, right? So bought into the thing that they're doing the right thing that they truly believe in it. That mm -hmm. you almost think like, oh, like I could get behind this guy, even though he's the villain. I think that's a really great character. Um, thoroughly enjoyed everything that was going on. I like the 
you know, Parkinson's ticks, if you will, at the, at the start to let you know that he wasn't quite right or there's something wrong with him right from the cold open. I, I think it was a really fleshed out character and kind of a shame that he ended up dying at the end because you think like he is still a good scientist unless his mind was really just that gone that he couldn't like bounce back and either create a reverse technology or something to just better society a different way. Well, I, f- I think he thought, I mean, he, I think he explained himself pretty well. Yeah, he I want to, if, if I give even one year or five years, I think I've done something and I respect that. Yeah. You could do what you can do. Only do what you can do to the best of your ability. And he felt like if he could save one life, then it was worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I think that really, that really worked. It landed. That landed it for sure. Yeah, I gave it a little bit of a heart episode, kind of like uh, Frederick Barnes back in season one. <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, would you would you have liked to have seen that technology come back in some manner, like to be used by Red or somebody else? Yeah, that's probably the one it. thing that's maybe missing from the episode is the what does Red get out of this? You know, there's always that when Red's giving you a case, there's always some kind of angle that he's going to either profit or. Yeah, there's nothing here. Really. There's nothing here tied to the story because he was more worried about getting his airfields back. Um, nice that the Skinner thing comes back up. That's kind of cool. And yeah, I, th- I was happy that, to see that. Like, I thought it was just going to be like a drop ball. So, right. That's good. Uh, um, so from that perspective, yeah, maybe a miss there tying the two together. But at the same time, I think overall it was an enjoyable 44 minutes of TV. All I right. was entertained. Well, I was entertained. I was entertained. Uh, are you ready to go to characters starting with the music yes music is back this week just one song at the end of the episode during the final sequence as we hang with the coopers that joke's never going to get old and uh, watch dembe with the box we hear dark matter by the serotones a uh, really cool song it's all already on the playlist and you can get those playlists over on apple music and spotify just go to our website theblacklistexposed.com and you'll find the links there in the column on the side or at yeah, the bottom as you song. scroll. Doug, that song. All right, let's go to Cooper. And we've got some weirdness with Cooper. So Charlene wishes Cooper had told the truth about his gun and the ballistics. He didn't. And he's to trying to explain why. Ass. What's that? To cover her own ass. Maybe, I guess. That two-timer, right? Because obviously she's also a murderer. Um, Cooper, in the meantime, sends a blood sample to the lab to see if he was drugged. Then he calls in the detective. Finds out the time of death was between 3 and 5 a.m. He obviously, we as the audience know he's lying because we saw the opening of the last episode. Cooper lies about his whereabouts and then asks his wife to lie for him. Now, I think we get the, we get the, the intention, not the intention, the appearance that Charlene is actually going to, to uh, not lie for him. But yet she tells she says she tells Cooper that she told the detective what he said, but she opens to him with, I'm not gonna lie for my husband. So what do you take from that? Just a misdirection for us? Could be a misdirection. It seemed to I don't know if it was clunky's the wrong word, but it seemed like she starts out to say, like, I'm not gonna lie for my husband. So you feel like she's not gonna tell the truth. And then she confirms that she did cover his alibi. The detective obviously backs off, says no hard feelings. So you have to assume based on the detective's words that she told the truth, but we know what the show is, right? Did the detective just say that to see what Cooper would say in reaction? Granted, that's kind of a little baiting and I don't know if that's legal or not in that line of questioning. Aaron can tell me because he's the poli sci major, but <laughs> criminal justice major. Criminal justice. Yeah. The, um, yeah, it, it was a weird conversation. Like, I don't know how to take it right now because I'm assuming we're supposed to take it as face value and say, all right, this is done, but it's not done because either the blood test is going to come back or it's definitely not something done. else is going to show back up. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what to make of that conversation. It was a little, little awkward. Yeah. It, it was placed just so, or framed just so, so that either instance could work. Right. So you, you do have a little bit of doubt about it. You do have, even though she gave the appearance to Cooper that she, said you know she covered the alibi um we didn't see that and i just i don't think that uh, i think there's there's a little bit of peace a little bit missing from that conversation that we haven't seen yet that's what i think agree or otherwise it was just misdirection and it was just trying to make us think one way while it goes another but there's no way this thing is over there's no way this thing is over i mean it's pretty 
obvious that there's more coming in regards to it. Yeah, I mean, Cooper's not going to let it go until Cooper gets an answer. I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't hope. I would hope not because, I mean, obviously, it was your gun. So how do you stop looking for whoever did that? You know what I mean? Somebody framed you. And honestly, I get why Charlene would be the number one suspect. And then, okay. All right. So here's where I will jump on the let's let's throw a towel at Charlene a little. Um, I don't even know what that expression meant, but. I was like, usually that means you quit, right? You throw in the towel, but. Yeah. So I don't know. I screwed that up somehow. But um, she basically makes him feel awful for him asking her to lie because, you know, he's the most honest man ever. And I'm like, well, I mean, you kind of put him in the position with this like before. So you had no problem with it. Now, all of a sudden, you're like, mini Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't understand. I mean, to me, I just feel like not really fair. Not very fair to put that back on it i mean you already put him through hell okay say okay our debt is washed clean you know i've we are even whatever you want to say but i think to make him feel horrible is not cool especially when he actually was questioned by the detective and he's sitting there giving him very straight answers like no love lost hated the neighbor never mowed his lawn screwed with my wife i mean he was very direct with the with the detective until the point where he said, oh, yeah, I was home after the party. And you're like, Cooper, why didn't yep. you just say what where you were? It's like I went for a drive and I fell asleep in a parking lot because I was tired and didn't want to drive home. At least that would have been a lie, but not a lie in a way. I'm, yeah, I get all that. I'm just saying, why is why are you mad at him? <laughs> why are you mad at him? I don't understand why you are mad at him. He did nothing to I mean, yes, he asked you to lie for him, but. You know, he's only in this predicament. He's only a suspect because, uh, you know, a few years back, guess what? And my guess is maybe, maybe she did drug him so she could frame him. So she, or maybe she not so much frame him, but take out the neighbor because the neighbor kept trying or they were still having the affair and he wouldn't let it go or something like that. I don't know. I mean, it, it, I guess it depends. Some dynasty stuff. Maybe she's making him. I mean, you don't want to get into like relationship therapy here, like in the room with Dr. Troy and Dr. Aaron. Um, you don't want my therapy. <laughs> that's for Leave. sure. Leave. Leave. Just stop it. If you're really that, just stop it. Unless you're really over it, stop it. Get walk on. But if you're, if you're having an affair, there's, I mean, yes, most of that burden lies on you because you made the choice and you stepped out and you did what you needed to do. But it's not like you stepped out on your own, right? There's still another person that, contributed, caused, led to, did things. I mean, there's there's two parties that dance in any kind of relationship and any kind of conversation. So maybe in their repairing of their relationship, it was all built on being present and being trustful and being honest and things of that nature. And so as part of the therapy for the two of them to get back together, to be in a place to take care of Agnes, that maybe that's why she was upset that he lied because it goes against the things they were working on in their therapy with each other to get back to where they were previously to the affair. Oh, wow. You really taking this outside of the show, huh? Just trying to, I'm just, you know, it it, it can make make sense. sense. That's logical motivation for why she was upset about it. Sure. Other than covering her own ass. What they both should be upset about is why is Agnes never there? That poor kid, apparently like, Great, Cooper got custody, but he never spends time with it because the kid, the kid is always apparently in a bedroom. Which don't get me wrong, I'm fine with. I don't need to see her. I was gonna say, like, <laughs> all of a sudden, Aaron's bipolar now. We want Agnes. We nah, don't want Agnes. We want not, Agnes. We not don't bipolar, want Agnes. But it's, I mean, you're in the house and they're having these conversations constantly. And I mean, I guess they are usually at night, so the kid's probably in bed. But make a make a fleeting comment about it. I guess Agnes is sleeping. I don't remember hearing that. Maybe there was, and I just don't recall. That's all you have to do, right? You just have to write in there like, keep your voice down. Agnes is Agnes can hear us. Exactly. Yeah, something like that. So it's it's weird. And I know there's more coming. We'll see where it's coming. And we should mention like um there's one more episode for the year and then it breaks till January. Is that right? I believe that's true. Okay. So we've got one after the holidays, sometime in December, and then I think I think one, one or two or whatever. So yeah, I think I it was like two or three right before the Olympics. Okay. Got it. And by the way, I like the line, secrets won't keep. People always say that. People are like, ah, oh, secrets always come to the, come out. Nah, not really. Everybody's got one. <laughs> That's a myth. Everybody's got one that just hasn't seen the light of day. And if you're listening, you know what yours is. You know. All right, so wrestler, 
He doesn't get much, but he does get to take it out on a government dick who developed the weapon. I like that scene. That was a good scene. For sure. He's just uh, and grilling him, partner. yelling at him, all gruff and tough. Like I, I like the um, darker FBI agent wrestler. I like wrestler much better this season than I than I have in the last couple. Honestly, I just think, that, and I think a lot of that is they're giving him more to do. Right, they're, just, they're giving him more to be kind of fired up about, less Boy Scout. I think that's more engaging this far into the run. Like give him. Give him a little bit more edge, and it's. I think it's working. I think the one concept that we were introduced with early in the season, of course, was this kind of feud between wrestler and Dembe. So I think, depending on how Red and Dembe stuff plays out, because obviously Dembe's now become the new Liz because he's coming to get the information from Red at the camper or whatever the hell they are. And I, I want to see the wrestler Dembe dynamic as partners in the field more than I want to see wrestler and Park together. Because more time wrestler and Park's been together, I'm just like, great. Peter's out of the equation now. She's lost the baby. She's in a dark, vulnerable place. And oh, there's wrestler sweeping in, knocking on doors. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know, I get where you're going. I don't like that whole TV mantra. I, I just don't like that mentality where two character, well, we got to ship them. No, can they just be friends? I mean, can they just be friends? I wish Mulder and Skelly would have stayed friends. You know, I mean, it is possible for, unfortunately, TV doesn't agree, but it is possible for a, a male and a female to just be great friends and there not be any waka waka waka. Uh, Billy Crystal would uh, disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, I know Billy Crystal would disagree with me, and he's mostly right. But there are I, there are definitely examples of that. I have a, a couple very close friends that there's no waka waka waka. So <laughs> it, it can happen. It that can a, happen. That is a weird sound you make in whatever you do. <laughs> You say weird, I say it's just it's just my sound, and sometimes I make it with my own mouth. I just waka waka waka. <laughs> Go to sleep with that. Images deleted. All right, uh, Park. She has a trust talk with her husband Peter, and you know, then apparently abandons trust and and her cancer appointment. That's a kind of a, a weird thing. She could have just solved that problem and known right off the bat. I. I don't know how I feel about the whole setup because basically because of her stubbornness or, or whatnot, she, she lost her baby. I mean, that's, yeah, that, that's hard. Um, she almost gets killed herself because she gets too close to Hans and, you know, gets a little bit of that jolt. And I, I think part, she does a really good job of having a seizure on the, on the pavement. People don't realize that's kind of hard to play. And I think she played it pretty well. Um, Comes out okay, but has a sledgehammer to her cerebral cortex. And then that's where we find out that she was pregnant, but she's not anymore. And then she lets out the floodgates. But the floodgates are not tears, Troy. It's important to note that. That means losing control. Right. Which I did I did like that. The one time when she was talking to Russell and she's like, I'm afraid I'm going to let out the floodgates. And, and he's like, tears? And she's like, oh, man. <laughs> I'm <just> like, <laughs> I thought that was a... It's a great retort. But so what do you think about the park storyline for this episode? Um, I mean, I I don't love the idea of you're pregnant and you lost the baby. So basically, she's been with the task force already just for a few weeks, and she's already lost her child over it. So already, it's not worth it. I mean, depends on your point of view, right? So Sure. No, no, no. I think that's everybody's point of view, except really, really anti-baby people. <laughs> but I mean, you have the same storyline with Ram, right? He's back with the task force and gave up in his business. And it's all about really that's comparable. <laughs> Let me finish. It ties <laughs> I'm into trying, I'm it, trying to see how it's going to get there. <laughs> it ties into the greater story of what is red willing to do and give up for his business. Cause we get that line in the end where he's like, I never should have come back. So I think that you're getting the parallelisms in the stories, which is something the blacklist has always done. And so I appreciate it from that perspective because we make decisions and have to live with those decisions, right? We don't make mistakes. We make choices and those choices are going to have a or B coming out of those choices. And we have to go ahead and continue on with our lives knowing that we made those decisions and those choices. And I think this story here in particular showcases to park like, Oh, I was having some challenges when I was in Alaska. I, you know, I have emotional volatility and, whatever else that I'm feeling and to have this happen 
where she is pregnant. She made a choice. She lied to Peter. And then because of that, she lost the baby. So now she's lost the baby and Peter because of her lying and her cheating and her not cheating, but the seat. Um, I think it's a well-rounded character for how Laura is playing the character this year. I think Park has actually become a really interesting character as the seasons progressed. Um, love her work in this episode. I thought she did a great job. And I'm, I'm interested to see now based on that fallout, you know, are we going to see Peter again? Are they going to reconcile? I don't know. Doesn't seem like it the way he stormed out of the hospital or, you know, what does she do with her job because of this? You know, does she become more Alaska throw Frankie through the glass window? She Hulk kind of lose control or is she going to figure out how to operate in a different way because of the choices she made? Just like red's trying to figure out how to operate because of the choices he made. It's a good question. We'll see what changes with her arc. Uh, you know, I just, I didn't like the way he stormed out of there. By the way, uh, you're, you're her husband. Hang around. She just found out she lost a child. Well, you didn't like you much know. about him in, in general because not the best acting, I would say. In this uh, particular I mean, character. new, new, new to the show, um, new role. I, I did not find it strong. No. Um, you know, casting can always be, be spot on, but I also, I, I just, I don't like the whole actions of it. I really, um, mm, yeah. I don't like the whole losing the baby right off the bat. We're five episodes in, and I just feel like that is kind of an old trope. It's an old TV trope to manufacture emotion from a female character, and I'm not a fan of it. So it it just felt too soon for me. But, you know, maybe it will. Maybe it will propel the drama going forward. Maybe that will really, you know. I if it It's got to put Park on an, an arc where she really starts questioning her choice to come back or something along those lines. Otherwise it was for nothing. So there has to be some additional material from that. Otherwise I don't see the point. I feel like that would have been cheap if it worked out that way. Like if this is the last we hear about it and it never comes up again, I will have felt like I will look back on this episode and feel like that was a cheap move. If there is a deeper examination character wise down the road, I I will feel like, okay, you know, that was the building blocks of something something else would you have liked it better if it was the reverse like wrestlers like oh it looks like you might be pregnant and then you find out it's cancer is that a no, different I mean, twist no. or trope on, on on the concept then because it's still manufacturing emotion no because honestly as soon as he even mentioned it no i wouldn't have liked it and I, I think either one is kind of a trope um i as soon as he mentioned it i mean the first thought is pregnancy and then immediately it's either She's going to be pregnant, which I can't ever see them doing that right now because she's the only female character on the show. And you already have you're We just went through all the Agnes stuff and they want to keep her involved in the storylines. And I think that would not detract from it. But I mean, she's she's obviously she's got to stay out of the field at a certain point for sure. Health wise. So I don't think that they were going to, I didn't think they were going to go to, to go that route. So I thought that's probably what's going to happen is she's going to lose the baby somehow. And I already I just didn't talk about it on the show because I don't. We didn't have anything confirmed, so I'm just basically spit firing. And then it happened so fast, you know, cancer. And then you just want to been battling the cancer back and forth. I mean, I feel like that's a tire. It's hard to not call something a trope because it happens all the time in TV. But on the same token, they got so many episodes, they have to do something to keep the characters involved and interesting. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I get what you're saying, though. I hate when it's like, oh, it's the woman. She's pregnant. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. Like women are more than just baby making machines. Yeah, yeah very much, yeah. very much. And, and I like Park as a character. I just, like I said, it all depends on what happens from this point forward. If it leads to something else in her character or some conflict with Red or the task force or her husband or whatever, I get it. And I'm, I'm okay with it. But if this is the last we ever hear about it, then it was, I will consider it cheap personally. Or maybe they wrote this way because they were like testing Peter and Peter's Ark, and they were like, ah, oh, Peter's Ark, nobody really likes Peter. Let's just figure out a way to get him off the show. <laughs> the audience doesn't like Peter. Time for her to get divorced. I don't think it works like that. Otherwise, Tom would have been gone a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? He's gone now. I'm a slow cat. I'm a slow clap for that one. All right, so Aram didn't really get much to do this week at all. He got a clue that led to an app, which leads to a location at 4453 Wentworth Avenue, but that's about it. Can we talk Weecha, about that app for a minute, though? Because I thought that was really cool. 
was it World World Word Three? <laughs> I thought that was really clever. Uh, Fifty-seven trillion squares breaks the world up into these little pieces, and then based on the three words, you get the coordinates. I'd like that's that's clever. It is clever. Like like it like words with friends got nothing on this thing. <laughs> it's clever. Hey, and you, you know what? A, what a you, Ram could have a successful career in IT if he would uh, pursue it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe be rich. Maybe even done some kind of security software. It could have been really, really I awesome for him. I think he could have made a lot of money and got a better buyout. Yep. But, okay, cool app. But that's about it. Uh, WeChat takes out what Dembe won't, which is the person that's going to kill Dembe. Right. So, um, and still bad and, and, and takes him off the map so that Red can get the air airfields back. Yeah, so Red can get the airfields back, sure. But also, uh, you can see very much that there is a growing frustration with Weecha and Red over his refusal to separate from Dembe. Which sounds like a uh, growing disdain between Dembe and Red about how Red should handle Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it continues to show that deep down, yes, Red is the bad guy, Red is the criminal, but Red does have values and Red does have... Uh, yeah, loyalty. loyalty. Loyalty above all else. Yeah. And... You need, but I love, I love the conversation they have on the phone. It's just um, like you're either in or you're out. Like, don't you understand oh, good. the rules? And where he's yelling at Dembe, I like that. So let's yeah. go ahead, jump in Dembe. So he's left Red, but he's still trying to take advantage of his connections, like he does to save Park's life. But Red is pissed, which was a real surprise to me. You know, we're so used to Dembe doing something and Red just talking to him, but he he scolded him like a. Father to a son. I know how those conversations go. And now we, we kind of learn that there's this battle between these two. So this whole, are you in or are you out? We got another mention of Brasilia again. You know, and of course, Dembe and his very, very calm, relaxed tone. He's like, why does it have to be one way or the other? Why can't it just be? So let's talk about this conflict with Dembe and Red. This seems to be like the most interesting portion of the season so far, aside from Cooper's dilemma. What say you? Do you have a side, by the way? I mean, pick a side this early. That's tough because I think many people probably sided on with Liz. Like, yes, she absolutely needed to know the answer. Like, why did you go through eight seasons of just making her life miserable when you're trying to just protect her? Like, that seems like a really, Uh, really raise his hand. (laughs) Yes. And then now we're here at the same exact juncture. Now they've had a falling out before, right? End of season six, right? Dembe goes on his walkabout and does his own Mm -hmm. thing because he's tired of the way that Red's approaching stuff. And maybe that was the same thing that happened here. We'll find out. Hopefully the season at some point could be a non blacklist episode. That would be kind of fun to watch. Um, get the little backstory. But I think that. Do I pick a side? That's tough. I kind of like I kind of like the dilemma because from a fan perspective, and I'm, I'm sure the showrunners follow Twitter and everything else and Facebook, whatever, Reddit um, from a fan perspective. Very much, I would say, the two most – there's three fan favorite characters, right? Ram, Dembe. <clears throat> and the Dembe-Red relationship has been one of many fans' favorite thing because Red is everybody's favorite character. I mean, across the board. That's the reason most people watch the show. So when you've got Dembe and Red, who people have loved this partnership for so long, and now they're butting heads, I think it's really – engaging fans and pitting fan against fan, which I like. <laughs> I do like that. I like, and, and nobody's really changing character to do it. Nobody's being out of character to do it. I actually think this is being written really, really well across the board. Yeah. And I think when you go back to pitches on the show, what is the show? And they're like, it's a love story. It's like, no, the blacklist is the love story between Liz and red. Not that they were lovers, but it was, they- uh, was. was but so now but when you think about it it's like it's like a love story again it's the love story between a man who raised this child for the majority of his life brought him into the fold and gave him an education and now like the 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 spoiled child is rising back up against the you know the the provider like it, it's a it's an interesting concept to see like what was so bad other than Liz dying like there's something even worse than that that caused the rift between the two of these, these good friends. And I'm really interested to see what that is all about because yeah, there could have been, I'm, I'm like, I'm with Dembe. Why can't it just be, why can't we just exist at the same time? I totally get red's point of view. 
My job is to be safe and protected and not have to look over my shoulder 24-7. Therefore, I have these protocols in place for a reason. I have eyes in the back of my head for a reason. I know exactly what my perimeter is at all times. And because of that, like you screwed that up. Like you put my life in jeopardy by trying to use my resources. I would be pretty pissed too. So I don't fault Red for his little tirade. I don't either. I don't either. And by the way, I wish he was as good about checking Liz's perimeter. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right? Got me? You got me. Everybody's listening. It's got me. Uh, so I, <laughs> I would add to that that I think Dembe's in the wrong this time. And I'm usually team Dembe across the board. But this time I'm, t- I'm team Red. There is a special set of rules and a, a, a fix to someone in the criminal underworld that do not apply to the FBI. Dembe, you, you chose a side. You can't just call in air support from Red's end whenever you want. And you basically got whatever that guy's name fired. Nice job because he helped you when he's not supposed to. So I'm team red on this. I think, he, you know, Dembe, Dembe was playing both sides at that moment. And I get why. I totally get why. On the same token, that's Red's call. You should have called Red and asked him to do it. Yes, 100%. And I want to know is if, you're, if I'm Red at the same time, the question is, did I kill the helicopter pilot? <laughs> because even though Dembe was like, Dude, you know me. Come pick me up. Like, whatever. It's the helicopter pilot that still made the choice to go do it. So, yeah. And it was an interesting dichotomy because, uh, no, I don't shoot. I don't think he shoots the helicopter pilot. He's following orders. He's, he's going to, he's just going to take care of the guy that, uh, he broke the order. Proved it. He did not give yeah. the correct authorization code. Yeah. But I don't think that was a helicopter pilot. That was just the guy on the phone. Oh, maybe. Yeah. That was the operator. The operator, sure. Does he kill the operator? Yeah. That's the customer service rep. That is your Comcast rep. Yeah. That's who that was. <laughs> Does it kill the Comcast rep? Because there's sometimes that that's not gone through my mind. <laughs> Definitely not because they're affiliated with NBC. So no, they're totally fine. Um, but I, I do, I, I do think that there was an interesting dichotomy and I, I enjoyed that Red was willing to basically take out a lot of people to save Dembe as well. So it isn't like he is not in, he does not hold love for Dembe or anything. But he has to assure those that he works with that he is not affiliated with him because it does make his life harder. And I'm glad they addressed that because I was kind of wondering if that was ever going to come up because I know that that would definitely be a problem because he's a known associate of Red's. (laughs) Going back to people who told me he's not known. How do you say he's not a known associate? What? Anyway, so, I mean, it, it was it was interesting and I thought it was really needed for the story to develop. And I really like this dynamic and I think it could play for a little bit. Agree. Not forever, but it, we could get some good conflicts out of this. Maybe Dembe is the new Liz. Maybe, but let's only do it for a season. And then if we go to a season 10, we get a different story. We don't drag it out for <laughs> another eight. Yeah. I mean, we've already kind of talked about you, uh, anything else on you, Red and Dembe, by the way. Can you imagine like we're sitting here 2026, like what happened in Brasilia? <laughs> oh my, no, I definitely can't imagine that. And I won't. <laughs> and I won't, Troy. Just so you know, I won't. Um, we've already talked a lot about Red and Dembe. So is there anything more on that? Those two you want to talk about? Red and Dembe? Um, Red and De- no, I think Red and Dembe we covered off pretty well. Like I'm, okay. I'm, just, I'm just glad that this is the story arc for the season. The, the mythology, if you will. I'm, I'm down for this spat. Yeah, I maybe it, maybe it they can sit up. down at a table in the camper and play tabletop paper football to resolve their differences. I would be okay with that. Um, We also got a, well, we got to see the Skinner tattoo in use, which was helpful. I still don't know if we needed that since Red's so good at rebuilding his own stuff, but you know, obviously it's paying off. Well, it it, it's Um, still the fear of God. And at least that guy, he's like, Oh crap. Like, like that was quick. Okay, fine. Sure. You're back in business. All right, let's go. Yeah, true. So, Teddy's got a relative who's just as twisted, his son, right? Little yeah, Jeffrey. Little Jeffrey. Who uses a uh, go to just to make sure, you know, which I'm not quite sure what that was, but that sounds like Teddy. Now, is is the actor, did the actor pass away or just probably wasn't available or something? That's a great question. That I don't know. I did not look into huh. that. But if anybody knows, I'm sure we'll find out in Special Agent Intel next week. There you go. But it was, a, it was a cool little torture. It was a fun little torture moment that torture runs in that family. Yes, and I love that the he's got the <laughs> rule number one: 
if you're going into a procedure, make sure you understand the procedure and yes, use your job aids, but don't bring your job aids to the presentation. <laughs> <'Cause he's going laughs> through the, okay. I got to do step one first and st- tie the lobster claw onto this and make sure. <laughs> I do love that. We never even see any of these tortures. We just see after the effects or discussion of going in. And that's always fun. Like it just makes it fun. I'm sure there was a lot of clamping going on in specific areas and we didn't, and see, um, we can just envision. <laughs> we end the show, you know, red saves Dembe ultimately. And he ends up in bed. Is it Misha? Yeah. Was that her name? Okay. Uh, with Misha and says, I should have never come back. So what did, what did you take from that whole scenario? Um, that he is obviously conflicted about Dembe. You know, he's like, Oh my gosh. Like, the way this is playing out with Dembe, is Dembe going to die like Liz died? I think that's what's going through his head specifically. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Well, and I I think part of him was res- resigned to never being involved in this ever again, right? Just living mm-hmm. his life relaxed and kind of without the stress, kind of trying to get the guilt away. Kind of makes you kind of disappointed that we used Dembe Zumba back in season four as number 10 rather than waiting to reveal Dembe as number two. They can this always season. they can always do Dembe conclusion or something. They always come back. To they it. could do that. That would be interesting. They could they can always come back. To proud it. of you. Proud of you. That's a good pull. I like it. Giddy up. OK, well, we got one more. Still wouldn't make him number got- two, though. It would still be number 10. Yeah, it would still be number 10. Just conclusion or something like that. They can always, or part two, (laughs) something. They could, they could definitely do something with, with his number if they wanted to. As long as Dembe does. He's already on the blacklist. That just saves a spot. Right. Gives you another episode without having to come up with another number. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, we, we are off. Well, the show is off for the holidays and I think it comes back in first or second week of December. So check your local listings. That's when the same week we'll be back. I think it's the ninth. I think it comes back on the ninth. Right. And we're going to, we got special agent intel. We got some more coming up, but I want to take a quick second and say thank you to those of you that are supporting the show by going to Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash the Blacklist GSM. Special big thanks to our honorary Blacklister, Patricia. Special shout out to our task force members, Judy, Matt, Karen, Marilyn, Ryan, Cindy, James, Jens, Justin, Ari, and Johnny, all official task force members. All those people receive cool gifts from us, and you can get one too if you donate at the $20 level or higher. If you want a cool t-shirt, a coffee mug, you know you do. You don't have to stay at that level forever. Just a few months to get the cool gifts. And we still have our $5 level as well. The $5 level gets you access to the podcast before anyone else, plus our special bonus episode of the month, which will be coming out here shortly in the space between now and the next time the episode airs. So if you're a Patreon member, make sure you check the Patreon site and check your email for when that comes out here in the next week or so. That's at P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash the blacklist G-S-M, as in Mary. Uh, go ahead and click the dollar sign in your podcast app even or in the Fedora on the website and throw your five bucks in the hat. It'd be nice. We can buy some Christmas presents for our loved ones. <laughs> All right. Well, stay tuned. We got All more right. of your great special agent intel coming up right after this. What if you could live your life without limits where every desire you ever imagined could be fulfilled? Experience Westworld, a show where every human's dark side will be revealed. After watching each episode, listen to Beyond Westworld, a podcast featuring humans and hosts from around the park, diving deep into HBO's illustrative narrative. Every hero has a code, and so do you. Download your itinerary and the show at beyondwestworldpodcast.com or your podcast app of choice. Hey, Dembe Loyals, this is Hisham Taufik. You are listening to Blacklist Exposed on Golden Spiral Media. Special Agent Intel, Jens on Patreon said, Hey, great to have you guys back. Got my t-shirt a while ago, and it's great. Also learned in this last podcast episode that Troy won't be able to hold a TSSCI, which that means a government security clearance, top security clearance. And... I don't remember what I said. That's going to make me invalid for that. From last week? Apparently. Uh, I don't know. I have one. True story. Okay. Yep. So obviously, I've never been convicted of anything. Probably because uh, you allude to murder all the time. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's probably why. 
If you're a convicted felon. Is it just because I watch serial clients. killer shows and I lived in the same town that Jeffrey Dahmer grew up in? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Oh, man, that's messed up. That's a weird combination. All right. Now you Dish know, White. Now, now you know why I reviewed that movie for you. <laughs> yeah. Dish White said, whoa, that last scene, some fan, um, that that last scene, some fa- some people, fans on here will quit watching due to that scene. Hang on. I want to ask, is this for last week's episode or uh, this, this week's, week's episode. episode? Both of these are for so this, this week's f- episode. Yeah. Okay. I pulled them last night. All right. Well, then I'll start again. Now, this is actually based on this week's episode. Dish White said, whoa, that last scene, some people, fans on here will quit watching due to that scene. I loved it. Let Raymond be Raymond, whoever he turns out to be. Love is love is love. We all want to be accepted and loved and not for us to judge. It's not our job. Um, why would they quit watching due to that scene? He's been with women before on the show and he's alluded to being with men on the show. So, oh, does Dish think that thinks it destroys the whole Red Arena thing? Because it doesn't. But I don't know. I thought it was. This was all mostly referring about Dembe and his relationship with Dembe. And how he felt about Dembe. Oh, okay. But that I'm could be. Just I don't confused. know. But I'm not. Well, stop, no, the, I'm not stopping watching the show for that. The last scene is those two in bed saying, "I don't. I regret coming back." So that's why I was assuming that. But doesn't do it. Doesn't change that at all. But yeah, to me, he's been with men. He's been with women. He yeah. Said specifically so that, in in in. Is that in a cello? He said that, or was it in Cognettes? But he said it in one of those both. two episodes. That in both. Oh no! It was in uh, Nachalo because that's when he's giving his um, speech to to Townsend before he blows him up with the the fire blaster. Yeah, but I think it was alluded to in both episodes. But it was, yeah. Beside the point, that was so last year. <laughs> that was well, so last this year, year last season. <laughs> yeah. What else we got? Uh, Dee Dee Elliott said, "I don't know what anyone else thought about tonight's episode, but I thought it was excellent." I'm loving the backstories of the task force, but I'm really loving the red and Dembe dynamic and trying to figure out what happened between them. I loved how they brought the box back from the past, but now I want to know what's inside the box. Judging by Dembe's reaction, it was something of meaning between the two of them. And I'm hoping it helps bring the two of them back together again. I really like where the season is going so far. And I think it's just going to continue to build from here. Yeah, so, so eight seasons and red's got, Secret notes to Liz buried inside of the graveyard. Secret notes to Liz in his pocket that he gives to Dembe. Like all these secret notes to Liz and Liz never gets the note. But Dembe has a box that's just sitting there and he never opens it. True. True. And I think I should. I think last week we talked about we hadn't had any real sentimental moments from Red much. Right. Um, I th- I think that was kind of here. So we did get a little bit, which yeah. is nice. And for people that were saying like, oh, Spader's phoning it in this year. He doesn't look like he's interested in the job in those first two episodes. I don't get that. Not at all. This episode, that. he was all like, like, no. like, what the hell? You stole my chopper and my guy and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, man, I wish I didn't come back. I think he was just supposed to play a guy who was dead inside for the first couple episodes. And he's slowly coming back to who he was. And, you know, now he, you know, he really got revved up in this one. Yeah. Really revved up. Which was nice. Yeah, it was nice. And then perplexed. Uh, and I want to throw... I want to throw one out from Mrs. Ellsberg on Twitter. I finally get why Aaron always claps when someone mentions Tom's death. I have the same reaction when he said Liz died. Ah, ha, ha. You don't get to steal my clap. This clap is only for Tom. That's right. Sorry. Can't steal it. Mine. All right. Well, that's going to conclude this discussion. So now is the time to recommend the blacklist to your friend, your enemy, or your neighbor. And when you do, please also recommend they listen and subscribe to the Blacklist Exposed podcast. All the case profiles can be found at theblacklistexposed.com and everywhere great podcasts can be found. More great Aaron and Troy hijinks. Follow us on your favorite social media outlet. I'm at Troy Heinrichs. He's at Aaron Smirks. Together, we are at the Blacklist GSM. Talk about the show, the podcast, or what's in the box? What's in the box? Go watch the movie. It's amazing. Oh, seven is one of the greatest films of all. No, nah, not of all time, but it's a great film. It's a great film. It's, it's great definitely film. worth a weekend watch if it's nice and cold where you're living right now. Oh, man. Especially if it's raining out. Yes. It's perfect. So much rain. I mean, probably so touch about rain. murder and stuff that things apparently I'm all into. From what exactly. Big thanks for listening. Don't forget to answer our profiling question. What's in the box? And we'll see you next week in your dreams. Not two weeks. In your dreams. But we'll see you oh. here in a couple weeks. On Patreon, you will, if you subscribe to Patreon, you're going to get our question answer right. section too. Your questions so. to us, and we're going to ask each other a question that we don't know ahead of time. So you might want to check it out. Five bucks in a hat. We'll see you soon. Take care. 
Until next time, I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. That's at Troy Heinrichs on Twitter. And if you want to learn more about me, just visit, well, about.me slash Troy Heinrichs. And I'm Agent Aaron Peterson. You can hear me talking about movies and TV on the Hollywood Outsider podcast, as well as remake this movie, right? We are available at thehollywoodoutsider.com or on Twitter at 5popcorn. Be sure to subscribe, download the app, submit your feedback, but most importantly, keep yourself off of The The Blacklist. The Blacklist Exposed is a Golden Spiral Media production. Find more of our great podcasts at goldenspiralmedia.com slash podcasts.